Okay, this is part one, graphing radicals, where I am talking about square roots specifically. In my next video, I will talk about cube roots. So what you see here are the rules for the square root parent functions. So there are four options. You have y equals the square root of x, y equals negative square root of x, y equals square root of negative x, and y equals negative square root of negative x. So what I want you to pay attention to are the signs. Because if you understand how that works, it will tell you which direction your graph will go towards. So for instance, for the first two examples, I have a positive x. So my only two options will be quadrant one or quadrant four. And so to determine if it's one or four, I look at the outside sign, which is um, the sign that goes, that's associated with y. So again, for that first, if I'm looking at that first um, example, I have a positive X and I have a positive Y, which tells me that this particular graph is going towards quadrant one. So what you also need to know is, well, what does a square root graph look like? Well, it looks like a parabola that's on its side, but I would just take half of that parabola. So, and it just depends on what your signs are. So if you look at the notes here, you can see what each one of your options will look like, quadrant one, Quadrant four is a reflection, and quadrant two is a horizontal reflection. Quadrant three is both a horizontal and a vertical reflection. All right, make sure you take notes from that. You definitely want to take notes here because this is the screen that's showing all of your transformations, what will happen. Um, all right, so for going left to right, f of x, of course, is your y value. And then you can either have a positive or a negative sign in front of your radical. If it's positive, of course, there won't be anything there. All right, so that just tells you you're gonna have a vertical reflection. So over to the side, I'm drawing what my parent function typically looks like, or just a positive square root. It's going to look that way. Well, vertical reflection means it's flipping over the X axis because it's up and down. So instead of it looking that, way is now going to be going towards quadrant four. That's what vertical reflection means. All right, so for A, the number that comes after that positive or negative sign, that's just telling me whether or not my graph is going to stretch or if it's going to shrink. Another word for shrink is compressed, so make sure you understand that. Index is basically the number that's on top of the radical. If it's a square root, you don't see the two. I'm just showing it for the sake of just having your notes. You may see another number if it's like a cube root, you'll see a three, so on and so forth. So that, that's called an index. B is, can be a number, but it can also be a sign. So if there's a negative sign, that simply means a negative one. If there's not a sign, that means positive one. That means horizontal reflection. So using my same example, if I am starting with my parent graph that's going this um, towards quadrant one, Horizontal reflection means that it's going to reflect over the y-axis because horizontal means left and right. And so this time my graph will go towards quadrant two. That's what horizontal reflection means. Moving on, x minus, well, there's, this is just telling you that the h part, that is going to represent your x on your coordinate plane. So think of the word horizontal, which is shown below. Horizontal shift means left or right. And so whatever this value is, that's going to be your X portion of your vertex. Okay, I guess I should have. All right, that's gonna be your X portion on your coordinate plane. So that's telling you whether it's going, the graph is going left or right. And then finally, your plus K is your vertical shift. That represents your Y value on your coordinate plane. So for H, you will change the sign of whatever is shown in your problem. And for K, you will leave the sign exactly as it is. Now, another thing I wanna point out, anything that is outside of this radical is associated with my Y values. So keep that in mind, that's gonna be helpful. And then anything that is inside of the radical is associated with your X values. All right, so you may wanna pause and take notes on this screen. And let's move over to an actual problem. All right, so this is a square root function. 
where there's going to be some transformation. So the first thing that I, I want to do is I want to label from my notes. So I know this is my A and then I have X minus H plus K. Well, the first thing I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for my vertex, which is my X, well, my, it's my H and my K, which on the graph is X and Y. So if that helps you. So my H, the sign always changes. So it's not a negative one, even though it looks like it, it's actually a one. So that's what's gonna go here, one. My K, I keep the sign no matter what that sign is. So it's a positive three. So that's gonna help me when I'm trying to actually graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this vertex and I know my X is one and my Y is three. So where they intersect, that's gonna be my starting point. So this is where I wanna go back to my rules. And I said, I wanna pay attention to what's going on with my X and my Y. So when I do that, all right, so I notice I have a positive X and I have a negative Y. So looking at positive and negative in my quadrants, again, if I go back to my notes, I see that that's quadrant four. So I know my graph is going towards quadrant four. For this purpose, I'm not being exact. I'm just gonna go from my starting point and I'm going towards quadrant four and it's half of a parabola. So I know that. I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how to um, get the exact points in the calculator. All right, so what I want to do now is I wanna identify my domain and my range. My domain are my X values. So my X always, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, but I'm focused on my graph. Where did my graph start? So that's where I look at my vertex. It started here at one. So that is my domain. My domain is going to be one. In which way is, my, is it going? It's going towards positive infinity. Okay, I do the exact same thing for my range. So my range, indicates my Y values. What's going on with Y? You always start from the bottom and it too starts from negative infinity and it goes all the way to positive infinity, but I'm only worried about my graph. What is going on with my graph? Well, it started from negative infinity, but I couldn't go all the way to positive infinity. I had to stop here. So again, this is what's happening with my graph. And it's going all the way up, but it has to stop at this point three. Wherever my number is, that's where my bracket goes. So when I'm talking about domain and range, I only have three options ever. So I'm either going to have a number in positive infinity. I'm going to have negative infinity in a number. And my number side always has the bracket. Or I'm going to have negative infinity to positive infinity. Those are my only options ever. What you also need to pay attention to is on the left, I'm sorry, on the right-hand side, the second space, you can only have a positive infinity. In the first space, you can only have a negative infinity. So it will never have a positive first and then a negative second. It never works that way. These are my only three options. All right, the other thing that I want to talk about is called the interval of increase or decrease. And that's dealing with my X value. So if I just look at my domain, I can figure out from one to positive infinity, what's happening with this graph. And then I'm looking at it, well, what's happening? From one to positive infinity is going down. So it's decreasing. That's all I wanted to know for my intervals of increase or decrease. So now what about the end behavior? Well, the end behavior as X is approaching positive infinity because it's not going towards negative infinity. I don't have to do that side. So as X is going towards positive infinity, what's going on with Y? So, or F of X, same thing. Well, F of X is going down. All right, so it's going towards negative infinity. That's my end behavior. Those are pretty much the only 
let's see, the domain range, interval of increase, decrease, and, and behavior, yes. That's what I want you to focus on for the sake of this um, concept that we're talking about for square roots. So what I do want to do is verify this on the calculator. So if you have a graphing calculator, you can go to y equals, put this information in, and then you can either go to second table or second graph, I'm sorry, which is what I would recommend that you do and verify that you're on the right track. How do you verify? Well, the first thing you wanna look at is your vertex. So it's one and three, which I haven't covered up, but this is one and three. So I know that I'm using the correct information. And every since that's my starting point, every X value before that one has to show an error in the calculator. So that's how you know you're on the right track. If you wanna be exact, you can just go ahead and take the two and plot a point at zero, so on and so forth. And then if you press graph, you can see what the graph should look like. So we understand we are doing this correctly. All right, so the next thing I wanna do real quick is just show you one more example. Let me get this straight here. Let's use a different color. We'll use blue. All right, so in this case, y is going to equal to 4 square root of x plus 1 minus 4. And again, until you understand the rules, just go ahead and label it. a times x minus h plus k. Now, what you will notice here is that your h, well, in front of it, there's a negative sign if I'm labeling it, but in my actual problem, there's a plus sign. So I, you always take the opposite sign of H unless there is a negative sign in front. And we'll talk about that in class, but you definitely want to make sure you pay attention to that because that will affect your vertex. So my vertex in this instance is actually going to be again, H and K, which represent X and Y on the graph. H is actually negative one. So you would have to change that sign in order to negative times negative is what's going to give you that positive there. And then for K, you leave the sign as it is. So it's negative four. So for graphing purposes, when I come over and I graph, I want to go to negative one and negative four. So where they intersect, I know that I can go ahead and that's going to be the starting point of my graph. And then I want to, if I want to see what direction I'm going, I go back to my rules and I see that I have a positive X. And this time I have a positive Y. Well, if I know my rules, I know that's quadrant one. So the X and the Y are both positive. My graph is going to look something like this, half of a parabola on its side. And then what I want to do now is determine my X values, which represent my domain and also my intervals of increase or decrease. So for domain, I already know my X starting point is negative one. And then I'm following the arrow, which direction am I going positive infinity or negative infinity? So my starting point for domain, again, wherever my number is, that's where my bracket is. And where is it going? It's going towards positive infinity. All right. And then I do the same thing for my range. This time, we'll go ahead and always label the negative infinity to positive infinity. You always start from bottom to top for range. I already know that my y value starting point is negative four. Well, what's going on with the, the graph? Well, it's going towards positive infinity. So again, wherever my number is, that's where my bracket is. And then I want to do my interval of increase or decrease. And I'm paying attention to my domain. So my domain tells me from negative one to positive infinity, if I follow my finger and I follow where the arrow is going, I am increasing. And finally, if I am wanting to know my end behavior, I'm looking at the direction that X is going. So it is going towards positive infinity. So as X approaches positive infinity, 
what's happening to my f of x or my y? Well, as x is going this way, y is going up towards positive infinity. I don't have to do as x is approaching negative infinity because it's not going towards negative infinity. Okay, I think that was it. The only thing like you, if you wanted to really verify um, that you're doing this correctly, again, you can use your actual calculator or you can follow what your rule said should happen. Your rule said that your graph, okay, so let's look at our original graph, that will help. So our original graph is something like that. So it tells you that you're moving to the left by one, which you did. And then you're gonna go down four, which you did. So that's how you read that to know whether or not you're on the right track if you don't have a calculator. Or you can always go to desmos.com or you can use your regular graphing, free graphing calculators on your telephone. All right, you guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.